All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming out this snowy night. I'm going to officially open the Regional Governing Board meeting of the Southwest Vermont Regional Technical School District for Monday, January 12, 2015. Um, we'll begin with uh, public comments. Do we have any? All right, no public comments. Before we start in with the committee reports, I, I want to say that um, we have an aggressive agenda with our budget tonight. But before we uh, dive into that, I want to thank the administration and our finance committee for the work they put in on this budget. It's, um, I think we've got some good news tonight for the community. And uh, I'm really proud and happy of the way the, the team came together to uh, prepare and finalize this budget. Um, committee reports. We're going to start with the strategic planning committee. And I just got a call. We got a text from uh, from my wife that Gloria was, I think, two miles out on the road and said that <laughs> I'm turning around and going back. And she's coming down from Arlington, and that was just too hazard for her. So she won't be here to give that report. So I'll I'll do the best uh, we can, I can. At our meeting last week, we finalized the um, the mission, philosophy, and goal statements that the strategic committee has been uh, working on. And you'll see that down in our agenda that we have that for approval. Um, and that's good news, because now the, the committee can move on and focus on, uh, on another issue, on, on other issues. And we talked about um, looking at programs. Uh, strategic planning is going to do a, a systematic uh, examination of all programs to include the adult ed. And uh, if there are any adjustments, if there's any additions, if there's any subtractions um, from those programs, um, the strategic uh, committee will, uh, planning committee will will examine that. And at the same time, we're relying on input from the advisory boards, as well as uh, from the administration, the teacher, the faculty, the staff, on uh, input towards uh, as we go through each of the 18 program areas of study that we offer here. The, um, the administration, Mike, Meg will examine the priorities of which uh, programs will go first, and we'll begin at our next meeting examining probably three or four programs and talking about that. From the Strategic Planning Committee, those program changes recommendations will go to the Ed Committee. The Education Committee will get together and examine, as well as the Facilities and the Finance Committee, and then finally, if there's any policy involved in any of the changes of, of the planning, um, we'll, we'll have to address it in policy as well. The objective of the, the review is that we complete it by the beginning of the new fiscal year, July 1st, and that anything that needs to be enacted can be finalized for the new fiscal year uh, associated with any of those programs, okay? So that's it for strategic planning. The notes are also in the, in the drop box. Policy committee meeting, December 15th. Leon, you want to give us an update on that? Yeah, if I can, I'm going to have to wing it. I can't pull up for some reason. I think it won't pull it up. But, uh, it, it, yeah, you can, oh, you mind? Good. The two policies are on here, but the minutes for the meeting was uh, passed and selected. So uh, we have those that are out there to bring forth this all for approval. Uh, just a courtesy approval to make the December 15 minutes. Okay. And uh, then we have two policies. Um, one of the uh, policies that I mentioned that we uh, have went through and approved, it just wasn't posted, and so we got that up. And this is here, uh, <coughs> policy number 31, uh, 10C, 
to um, is the uh, accounting policy that we reviewed. And so at the bottom of that policy, it just shows that we reviewed that policy without any changes. And then we determined that that was an enterprise policy that needed to be developed, and that's in the works out there somewhere as opposed to having to make any changes to the accounting policy. Policy 7800 uh, was the policy that we worked on for public participation at board meetings, and that's ready for us tonight. And that was one other policy that we just didn't have on the internet, and I can't. The internet use policy. That's, that was the, well, I mean, we do work on the internet use policy, but it was another policy that we had about the. Is it dress code? No, it was, it, it has to deal with, uh, the uh, courses that we've taken, and we had public participation with with the the students in the class, and I and I uh, I can't I can't pull it up right now, but that one is posted as well. It's just posted on the site. Okay. I mentioned that last time, so that showed up in a minute somewhere, but it's being posted. But this evening, the only action we're taking on policy is the policy associated with the participation. Right. Right. We'll go we'll after that later. Yeah. Okay. Good. Finance. Well, we did meet, and uh, I'm sure Stephanie has a good presentation for you, so I won't bore you with all the other details, except for I think we're still at around less than a half a percentage point up. No we surprise. So I think you'll be very pleased with what everyone did. Mostly it was the administration. We can take credit, but the administration and the teachers did a great job. To, to mention the teachers, I do want to put out that they've got deadlines and schedules and budgets that they've got to prepare. They do it very effectively. Uh, they're getting very good at it, and they're doing it electronically for you. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll cover the budget then as we get into the meeting. There are notes on the finance committee meeting as well as the draft. Let's move on to the consent agenda then. Um, can I have a motion to accept the minutes of the full board meeting for December 15th? So moved. Second. Seconded by Leanne. Any questions on those minutes? All right, all those in favor of approving the minutes of December meeting, please signify by raising your hand. We have two um, warrants. We have uh, two, the payroll warrants, of course, and vendor warrants. And we'll uh, take a motion to approve both of those together. Please. So moved. Second. All right. Moved by Kevin, seconded by John. Okay. Any questions on the warrants, the payroll warrants or the vendor warrants? Okay. I have one on the vendor warrant. 1027. There's an item on page 13. It's called Messersmith Manufacturing. And I just wondered what that was. That's the uh, wood chip boiler. Messersmith is the okay. manufacturer of the wood chip boiler, as I recall. Probably a part to it, I would imagine. Yes. Yep. And it's, well, and it's an allocated expense from Allocated from the Any other questions on the warrants? All right, seeing those, all, none, then all in favor, please signify by raising your hand to approve these warrants. That is unanimous as well. Okay. Cash flow statements and the revenues and expenses were in the drop, drop box. And there's no questions or concerns on those. We'll move on to the superintendent's report. Good evening. I'd like to make a comment about the, uh, the Dropbox. We have made some changes um, today, actually, to the, the layout and format of the, the vendor warrants and the statements so they are more easily readable. 
Um, I know Jackie, you had asked for it, and we thought we had it corrected, but we, we didn't only on some documents. So um, they are now correct all in the landscape format, so it should be much easier for, for you to read. Uh, we're going to continue in that format. Uh, now that we've got a process down to, to get them in the Dropbox the proper way. So it should be easier for folks to set everyone in their head to read them. Um, <clears throat> So I do not have a, uh, a full presentation up here tonight uh, like I normally do because it is the night for, for the budget and that's what I want the focus to be um, tonight on Stephanie's presentation. I do have a few things to talk to the board about in the community uh, about what, what we're doing uh, but that'll be, it'll be brief compared to normal, uh, normal report. So first off I'd like to welcome Meg Hansinger uh, to the CDC. She's our new assistant director and I've told her she has to speak few words tonight to the board to words. introduce yourself. So. I'm going to say three. No. <laughs> um, I, I just want to thank you for this opportunity. Um, as many of you know, I migrated down the hall um, from MAU. I worked there for 12 years um, and, you know, wore various hats, including school counselor, twilight program administrator, um, director of guidance. And um, I was really excited about this position. Um, Mike and I, I think in the past few years have developed a really good working relationship, which you know was really my draw, one of, one of the biggest draws. So, um, and he as well as the other um, administrators and staff have been very supportive, very welcoming. Um, and you know, it does help having knowledge of, of the building, of the students, of the teachers. So um, I still have a learning curve, but um, you know, it, it's definitely nice walking into a building that I, I already feel welcomed at. Um, you know, as a high school student, I wish I had the opportunity to do career and tech, technical education. Um, I think it would have provided me with a lot of um, direction after high school. Probably would have told me not to go to nursing school, which I did for a year. <laughs> but, um, you know, I'm just I'm in awe with all of the instructors, the knowledge that they have in their um, professional areas and how they balance that with being teachers in the classroom too. Um, so. I'd like to thank you, and uh, it's been great so far. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Believe it or not, we are almost through halfway through the school year. Uh, the, the first semester ends next week, which seems impossible already, uh, but it does. <laughs> um, uh, we'll have we we keep the majority of our students here at the tech center for, for the duration of the school year. Uh, we don't see a lot during a semester change, but we we do get some new students in our short block or our pre pre-tech foundation courses. Um, so those start Monday, January 26th, which isn't that far off. Uh, we will have an influx of new students in our short blocks, um, but necessarily not in our program. So we will see some new students, so we're gonna welcome them. I'm going to give you an update um, on Vermont Act 77, which is Flexible Pathways. And that was enacted by the governor in 2013. And a component of Flexible Pathways is called PLPs, or Personalized Learning Plans. You've probably heard of them um, out there. Uh, they're being phased in over the next couple of years. They're required by 2017 uh, for all students. Uh, the CDC is working very closely with Mount Anthony Union High School um, and other sending schools to ensure that students have access to CTE at the Tech Center, uh, to make sure we're at the table when students are developing these personalized learning plans um, so that CTE can be more embedded, integrated into their learning plans. Uh, actually, we're meeting tomorrow morning um, with, with key folks over at the high school uh, to make sure we have a seat at the table uh, to uh, help our students gain better access to tech ed, uh, to dual enrollment, to fast forward, voucher options available to them, and to earn college credit. So we're really excited about, about getting on board with that. Uh, it's going to really ensure uh, the future enrollment here uh, long term at our, at our tech center. Um, I reported at the Strategic Planning Committee meeting. Uh, we've created this year, uh, it was a group effort to create a new program of studies. Uh, it is in your Dropbox uh, under superintendent's documents. You'll see it there. Uh, it will be available on the CDC website soon. Uh, it's, a, it's a brand new document. Uh, just 
really finalized maybe a couple weeks ago. Uh, it is in print now. Uh, our program of studies, we embed it with the Mount Anthony program of studies. So when students are looking through the Mount Anthony program of studies, they happen to come across DDC as well. Uh, we also publish our own copy that is not, not inclusive of Mount Anthony's uh, for other sending schools. Uh, and it's, of course, it'll be digital uh, on our website. You know, it looks very different. Um, I don't have it up here for you tonight, uh, but it has a completely <coughs> new look to it. So for those that are watching at home, uh, check out our website. In a couple of days, you'll see it there. Uh, for, th for the board members, you should be able to see it in your, in your drop box. Um, the last thing that I had before the, the budget presentation is on January 8th, the National Automotive Technicians Education Foundation, or NADEF, um, has completed their evaluation and mid midpoint compliance review of our automotive program. Um, there's also a letter in your Dropbox from, from Native. Uh, I'm going to read this. Based on the information that's been provided, the automobile training program at the Southwest Vermont Career Development Center continues to meet the Native standards for quality education. Uh, and this is a huge accomplishment for the automotive program. Uh, the review and accreditation process involves looking at facilities, equipment, curriculum, and technology. Uh, additionally, it requires the instructor to be certified as an ASC master certified technician in 10 different areas, uh, which include maintenance and light repair, engine repair, automatic and manual transmissions, steering and suspension, brakes, electrical, heating, and engine performance. So our instructor has to be a master uh, technician in all of those areas as a component uh, to be native certified. Uh, native is the gold standard for automotive and training certification programs in the country. Um, someone asked, what are the benefits of a native certified program? It, it identifies program excellence to draw more students to the school, provides a way for students and counselors to identify quality schools and programs, uh, provides assurance of a higher quality education, and increases potential to secure a solid career after graduation. Um, so we are, are very proud of our automotive program uh, and the accomplishments that, that, they've, that they've, they've completed. Uh, it takes a lot to be certified, national certified program. And we're, we're very proud of that. Uh, I'd also like to report on the automotive program. You know, this year, the school board has voted almost every month uh, to expend some of our Perkins money for program improvement, uh, medical professions, automotive, and, uh, and those, those are the two I can think of right now. But today, uh, it finally was delivered from, from Hunter Alignment, the, one of the alignment upgrades that we approved at, at the board meeting. And it was fascinating to, to see it's, it's uh, not a complete new system, it's an upgrade. Uh, to the system to enhance student experiences, and students can now uh, pull the vehicle onto the alignment machine, use a wireless handheld scanner, for lack of a better term, like you'd see at Hannaford or a price shop or wherever, they scan the VIN code, automatically goes into the, the alignment system so that all the right checks and balances are in place, um, and all the right specs, including the, uh, I had it jotted down here and now I'm missing it, uh, all newer cars have steering sensors in them which allow for traction control and all, all things automotive, and we couldn't address those before, and, and now we can. So students are, are getting access to real world experiences with that. It's, it's really neat to see. Um, so that's that's my superintendent's report. Unless you have questions on on anything uh, tonight, we have to answer them. So for the budget presentation, um, Mike, I just yeah, I just want to sum up that uh, we're very proud of that our auto program. We're proud of our instructors and our students. And our congratulations goes out to the to the program, the instructor, the students for, for the excellence that they demonstrate uh, in that area. Okay, make sure you pass that out. I will. Thank you. Okay. For the budget presentation, I have just a couple <coughs> housekeeping items on the budget, and then I will turn it over to, to Stephanie to present, and we'll answer questions back and forth of, of the board. Um, like last year and this year, we uh, worked on zero-based budgeting followed that premise this year to develop a budget that hopefully will be adopted tonight. Um, as Jim mentioned in the beginning of the, of the board meeting, we are doing the electronic, the budget 100% electronically at this point. Teachers are submitting their budget electronically from their, either their iPad or their laptop or their desktop uh, into our infinite vision system. <coughs> We're calling the data, going through it all electronically. It's been a kind of a neat process this year. It's my first time going through being this involved in the budgeting process.